Hello Libra friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Libra July 2024 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. This is for you if Libra is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other Libra placement you're listening for. What I'm going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. And if you're a very late degree Libra friend, so birthdays around October 15th through the rest of the sign or 23 degrees of Libra placement through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my Scorpio report as your very late degree friends will benefit from both readings. Well, uh, the name of this uh, title that I have for you that embodies the most broad, exciting, long-term thing that I want to talk about, I'm calling the Fate Triangle, A New Era for Libras. And wow, this is exciting. But we also have a lot of things that are shorter term and less consequential in the bigger scheme of life, but very, very critical for you to know to be equipped for July. So I'm going to blow through those first because once I get started on the other thing, it's not gonna be easy for me to come off of that. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some basic facts. The first thing to know is that we are in a month where we've got more sweet aspects compared to salty. Salty is my word that I use for when the planets aren't getting along. So we've got a lot of nice bumps all throughout the month. We have some annoying bumps too, some Pluto um, oppositions and, you know, just with little power struggles for days at a time and just kind of par for the course nuisance things. But we do also have a ton of beautiful aspects, uh, five aspects with Venus and outer planets and Venus is your ruler. So all dancing throughout the month, we've got all of this beautiful, um, smooching i like to call when the planets make a nice aspect a kiss with your um your ruling planet so we've got you know libra's the ruler of aesthetics and beauty um, for you and your surroundings and also for other people art this is the ruler of money and finances and love and relationships and nurturance and self-esteem and confidence so we've got a lot of just boosts to all of those things throughout the month and that's very exciting this is a month where we're still enjoying a break from the craziness of eclipse season. And you as Libras are definitely in the hot seat with eclipse season. If you don't know about this yet, you need to know because we're in an Aries Libra eclipse cycle. And in the spring, wow, that was a big time or fall for you all down under. And then now next, starting in August, August, September, October, we're going to be back in crazy life changing, you know, just, you know, just trajectory altering, um, you know, possibly high stress, but also very exciting times. But July, we're not there yet. You may be seeing storylines happening more quietly, less dramatically now, but I just wanted to point out to enjoy the break because we are kind of going to be in like, things are start going to start to go really fast and um, you know, a lot of changes can happen in a short amount of time once we're in August. So enjoy the break. The other thing to know about July is that it's a hybrid month in the way that the first half of it until around July 16th is this still this beautiful open period free from personal planet retrogrades where um, if you have to make big decisions, big moves, big purchases, big launches, once in a lifetime things that you're trying to do, you know, something that you want to have longevity for a long time, something basically that you want the tides to be going out when you launch it so that it goes far and wide. We've got until the middle of July to do that. Okay, so we're still, you know, if you're watching this early, June, we're in this open period, July, we're in this open period. Once we get around July 17th, not only does that turn for the month where we start going into retrograde deeper every day, uh, but that also kind of turns for the year because the second half of the year is going to be dominated by retrogrades with just a short pop up. So, you know, if you've got a push to get some big projects done, if you had something tabled to deal with to try to launch later in the year and you have the oomph, you may want to get those things done now. Also, just in general, like appointments, you know, teeth cleanings, just anything that requires you to schedule and communicate with others. I don't know about you, but I'm finding it exceedingly more difficult just to get a person on the phone for a doctor or a dentist appointment. So like those kind of things that might be annoying if they have to reschedule, the first half of the month is also good for those things because once you get into the retrograde, it's really hard to plan. Things get unscheduled, mess ups happen, and you know things just get overall murky and more inward and backward. It's not a time to be afraid of and it's not a bad time. It's just not a time you know, for trying to smoothly move forward. You know, it's a, tide when the, it's a time when the tides are going in. So in the middle of the month, the tides will start creeping in. So anything you push out will come back to you. 
And if you want something to go far and wide, it's still gonna come back to you. So, you know, just, just kind of manage your, um, your moves there so that you can align with the natural rhythms. Okay, so let's hit another couple of points. So we've got a lot of energy in Cancer and Cancer energy for Libra crowds your 10th house of work and career and employment and accolades and reputation and fame. So you may find yourself in the limelight, especially with this, uh, we've got uh, a bunch of uh, beautiful aspects on the 2nd, the 8th and the 11th. I'm not going to outline those here now, but just so that you know, this 10th house is going to be further blessed around those times for you because of the beautiful aspects happening. Now, that does actually make a square for the labor placement. So that shows that you may have some pressure at work. You may have a deadline. You may have like a crunch to try to get something done. You know, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. It just means that the pressure will be on. And if you're trying to accomplish something, like you're trying to get your launch done, you know, in the time frame I'm giving you, that could be the pressure, like do it, do it, do it, to just like get it out and birth something new. You may be birthing new things in your career and work and employment. If you don't have to um, earn money, you know, to live, this could be just some place, your place out in the world. You and your community, um, you and your, you know, sports team, you and volunteer efforts or passion projects. It's your place out in the world that's getting lit up here. And that is true whether you get paid for it or not. Okay, so the fifth, we've got a 14 degree Cancer new moon. That is new beginnings um, in your work and career the same area, this is a good time to make those wishes or intentions for everything that's in that arena. Parents could be in there, you know, one of your parents, um, you as an authority figure, your relationship with authority figures, your work, your place out in the world, you can make your wishes in the days around the 5th to have extra power there. In the days around the 21st of July, we actually have a blue moon. It's the second there are three different definitions of what can make a blue moon. I'm not going to go into all of them now, except the one that's relevant here. If we have a second full moon in the same sign twice in a row, the second one is the blue moon. So in June, we had a blue, uh, a full moon in the early degree, one degree of cap. So now we're having it at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So that is, um, you know, once in a once in a blue moon type of you know um, energy. So that's every 13 moons. It's not, you know, like years and years and years, but there are a lot of moons that pass between the time we have this. So you can do something extra special with it. For you, this is going to, well, first of all, it's in the sign of Capricorn. So it's back to your work, you know, work and employment sector. But the house it highlights for Libra is home and family and housing and real estate and your inner world and your cozy sacred space and your personal connections with other people on a heart level. And those energies are also being highlighted from the movements of the Sun and Venus and Mercury. So you've got a lot of, the, of this polarity of home versus work, inner world versus outer world, you know, um, parents, mother, father, you know, um, however, just that polarity basically. So that's happening. And again, there's a square there. So there may be pressure. Maybe you're, you've got a new job and you're moving for it. Okay. So there's pressure at home, pressure at work. You know, these are pressure points, but sometimes it takes pressure to birth something wonderful. And so you might be birthing something wonderful in your home and family and in your workspace and out in the world. All right. So those are the highlights. There may be another couple of points I want to get to after, but I want to get into this fate triangle. So by the way, the visuals, if you enjoy the visuals, I am going to put them at the end of this report. And I'll let you know if you don't like, if you're not into the visuals, I'll let you know you can sign off when I'm going to go into those. And if you're interested in the visuals, they will be at the end. And I'll just hit and circle and show you all the things that I talked about, including the fate triangle and the beginning of this new era for Libra. So what is this all about? Okay, so there is a grand trine happening in the sky at the beginning of July. A grand trine is when there are three planets in the same elements that are close to the same degree. So in this case, it's an air trine and we've got um, Sedna, which is a planet you don't hear much about because Sedna is such, oh, it's so far away and it's so slow moving that 
not much happens except in this period of time because we're actually in, in, a, in a period of time and I'll probably have to do something separate about this at some other point. But we are in a period of time where Sedna is changing signs and it's very, very rare that, that Sedna changes signs. So Sedna is now at zero degrees of Gemini and then we've got Pluto at, you know, lurking around the early degrees of um, Aquarius. So they're in a trine and these are outer planets. So this happens for a long time. Now enter Lilith into Libra. Okay, so Lilith is going to be in your sign. Lilith is coming and adding the last, you know, um, peg to make this beautiful grand trine. And this is a really big deal. So Lilith won't be in Libra as long as Sedna and um, Pluto will be in their respective air signs. But what happens now is going to kick off a new era for Libras. And this has a lot of different layers to it, okay? So I'm just going to break it, break it down piece by piece. And it will involve me having to go into um, a little bit of backstory about some things to help you understand the energetics so you can see how, it's, how it can come to play in your life. Lilith was the first um, woman in Eden. Okay, so we don't hear about that. We hear, you know, we hear about Eve more, but Lilith was expelled uh, for her sexuality and her desire to be an equal with Adam. So this, you know, she often will represent, you know, sometimes exactly that equality having to do with gender. Um, but, you know, when we take this to a more general level, level, this is uh, the energy of equality, equality in partnerships, balance, balance in partnerships, because, right, it's moving through Libra. So this is a new time of really, really doing deep dive, very deep dive. Pluto's involved, right? Lord of the Underworld, Sedna, th that, you know, changes sign, you know, not generally in a lifetime. And th so this is a really deep dive. And actually Sedna rules the underwater realms. And we know about Neptune ruling underwater, but this is a different dimension of underwater. And this is, well, basically what happened with Sedna, and there are different stories, but one of the stories is that she was betrayed by her father. Um, she was drowned by him and he cut her fingers off when she was trying to hold on to the kayak. It's an Inuit um, uh, mythology. And so the fingers that um, were cut off became sea creatures. And so she's like the keeper of the sea, but she's also, you know, a receptive version of Neptune or Poseidon where it's like the keeper of the emotional waters. So your emotional waters, deep, deep, deep emotional waters are part of what's going on here. Pluto is under the earth. So mining, you know, mining for riches under the earth, gems, metals, etc. So we've got two outer planets that represent the depths of something. And then we've got uh, Lilith here, which represents repression. So there, the energy of repression, the energy of not feeling equal, the energy of not feeling like things are fair, um, suppression, all of that is now clicking into this very positive alignment. So these are pretty heavy, uh, you know, heavy hitters with pretty deep, dark stories. But this configuration is not that. It's light, it's happy, it's uplifting, and it's the best possible configuration in all of astrology. It's like all of the positive sacred geometry just wrapped in to, you know, to one. And all of this is in air and all of this is clicking into your Libra placements. So this is, you know, this is a really big deal. Topics like betrayal are going to be very, very big in this new era. There are, there may be people that who have, who have betrayed you. There may be things that you're repressing as far as whether you've really forgiven them or not. And there may be work you have to do to overcome that. Even if you think you forgave them and you didn't, this could be affecting your health. This could be affecting your relationships. This could be causing passive aggressiveness. Um, not to say that you're at fault if someone did something to you and you still haven't forgiven them, but you know the the that's just what's happening here. There's something there's something deep within that you've been pushing down that has to come out, and that's going to look different for you. And there could be that could be happening in many different arenas of life as well your authentic self in one way or another. Maybe it's your job, maybe it's your relationship, maybe it's, you know, something that society is telling you that you don't believe. You know, it could be anything, you know, like my family told me you have to get a job and stay there for 30 years and then retire. And that didn't feel true to me, you know, that and now we see there are other options besides that. In a certain time, that was the only option. And for some people that is, is still the best option. But for other people, it's not. 
or vice versa. You know, with so much um, going on with the internet, maybe there are some people that would be better suited to have something stable and long-term. But the point is that what is true for you? So these are the questions that are being asked. And the more that you consciously ask the questions, the more you can make the, the, use of, you know, the best use of this consciously, because there's a lot of deep unconscious stuff at play here, you know? The topics of betrayal, and really probably the biggest question of betrayal is going to be where are you betraying yourself? Are you betraying yourself by staying in a situation that's not working for you? Are you betraying yourself by trying to be the peacekeeper at your own cost? Are you betraying yourself by, um, you know, having a secret that of something where you did something that is eating you up inside, where you have to get it out or come to come to terms with it? Is it your job? Is it your position? Is it, you know, something having to do with your relationships or the types of relationships that you're in, you know, or the different roles that you find yourself in life, in society? All of these are very, very deep questions. And, you know, this is going to be kicked off right at this time. And what is set forth here is going to open a new era for you of asking these questions, of diving in deep, of healing. You know, you may need support like other practitioners to help you heal the resentment, to help you heal the grief um, or whatever it is that's happening there. And so the, the places in the chart where, that are being affected by this for you are your first house. This is your physical body. It's your identity. So a lot wrapped up into that and your relationship with your body. I think most people were not brought up in a way to honor their, their bodies. You know, um, many people were taught you have to finish all the food in your plate and I'm not putting down, like not being wasteful, but there's a lot of places where we were forced to do something to our bodies that didn't feel right to us. And that's creating, you know, all of these generations of people who don't know how to work with the fact that it's our body and that, you know, we now have say in that. So there's a lot going on with you and your physical body. Pluto aspect of it is in your fifth house of romance and true love and fated relationships. So this energy of fate is a very big piece here. It's, I'm calling it the fate triangle. And Pluto really carries this energy of fate. It's like there are certain people in, that come in your life where you know that you were really meant to meet that person. And this is heralding a time where that's going to be happening a lot more. Romantic contacts, things involving children, really things involving anything. But, you know, the hands of fate might be more obviously at work and you might have this draw to people. Now, psychologists will say that when we're drawn to a situation and we fall in love, that's our unconscious mind recognizing that in someone else is the reflection of the things that we went through prior, prior to that time, like as a child or, or, you know, or whatever, that will replay those situations that we went through. So, you know, it's a very unromantic um, definition of falling in love, but, you know, we know it does turn out to be true. A lot of times we feel like we married our mother or our father or our, you know, whatever, um, whatever traits are coming up that we're, we don't have resolved with our parents or caretakers or whoever else will often come up in these relationships, romantic and otherwise. So you'll, you'll start to see this, like, a very strong... Um, you know, and there's a lot of sexual connotations here. This is between Lilith and between Pluto. Pluto rules Scorpio, which is the ruler of all of the sexual realm. There, these topics of, you know, being connected with understanding things about yourself and the way that you express yourself and connecting with other people and deep intimacy and trust. And that brings up the, the uh, topic of betrayal. So, now I could go, keep going on this, but I'm going to hit this last point because you know I want to I want to keep this short enough to be usable by you and not overwhelm you. But this topic of trust is a very very big one. I mean, between Sedna, you know, being betrayed by her father, um, and Lilith being cast out because you know of what she wanted it to be fair, what she thought was fair. So you know, this is going to come up, and this topic of trusting people probably the best way that I can. I can convey what I want to here is by telling you a quick story about something that somebody said to me that has really changed my life. So one of my bestie buds, his name is Jeffrey Allen, he, at the time that we had this conversation, he and I could intuitively see that we were meant to help people and a very, like, a lot of people. And we couldn't really see how that was going to look, but we, we felt together like, wow, yeah, we're, we're going to be helping a lot of people. Um, and now he's actually a Mind Valley um, author and speaker. 
you can look him up, he's amazing. But he, so he said to me, I had just um, moved to a place where I met him and I had separated from a partnership, a business and romantic partnership that was, you know, real, I was very involved with and there was betrayal and I was having a really, really hard time, really hard time with it. So I said to him, is there anybody that you trust? You know, is there anybody? Is there anybody that's trustworthy in the world? And he laughed, he smiled, and he said, Annie, I trust everybody, wait for it, to do exactly what they're going to do. And that's what it's like, whoa. I mean, I still get chills when I think about this. I trust everybody to do exactly what they're going to do. So that means, for instance, if there's someone that's an alcoholic, unless they are doing something in the way of changing, you know, those deep patterns, are they then going to drink again, even though they've told you they weren't? Probably, unless they find it within themselves, do something different, get the support they need and change it. They absolutely can change it. But if they don't do the work to do that, are they going to drink again? Probably, right? So if you believe that the person who told you, okay, I'm not going to do it anymore, is actually going to do, like, to, to do that, well then, you need to trust that they're going to do what they're going to do, right? So then you start to become safer because you start to understand the nature of human behavior. And there, there's a lot of elements of this. So there are probably people in your life that are making you promises, they're telling you they're going to do things, and there's a small percentage of them that actually will make a change, you know, if there were previous things that they were doing. But if they're not at a point where there was, they've come to a resolution with this, and they're doing something active to change that matrix, then you have to know that there's very good chance that that's what's going to happen. And maybe you're the person, you know, maybe you're trying to change some behavior. Maybe you have something that um, is a habit that's hurting you or other people. And you might need that intervention from somebody else to help support you to change the matrix. And that might be what this is about, as I was talking about, like it relates to your physical body. So, you know, this is a time, an era that's opening up where you're going beyond the veil. You're going into the deep emotional waters of your being from a receptive state. You know, you're going into the deep emotional waters of your being um, from the perspective of mining, um, you know, uh, resources in a way that's sustainable. You know, Sedna really does speak to sustainable using of resources. And, um, and that can be emotional resources. It can be financial, it can be emotional, it can be time. You know, whatever your resources are, you're, you're going to, through a new era of seeing what is, what is making you exhausted. And in a lot of cases, what's making you exhausted is doing things for other people that they need to be doing for themselves and you wanting to keep the peace and not holding them accountable. So it's a big, 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 big time. This is opening up, you know, a new era for you. Okay, so let's see. One last thing at that full moon on the 21st, we also have a Venus um, angle with Jupiter, which is amazing that I'm very excited about. So that's kind of blessing that blue moon time as well. All right, so for those of you who don't wanna see the visual, definitely go to anniehelpsyou.com, put your name and email address in there, and that's where you can see more dates, more aspects that I love, and more aspects to be careful and awareful of. Um, so basically, when you put your name and email address in, you'll get the welcome letter. It could go to spam, move it to your inbox. Click on the archive link in the welcome letter and put in July 2024 astrology. That will be my sweet and salty write-up of the, of the good and difficult uh, uh, aspect days. That will be my highlight of the whole month written and you get all kinds of other goodies. So if you want more information and you love the dates and you want you know to dive deeper, you can do that. That's my free VIP community. For those of you who are interested in just seeing very quickly the visuals, I'm going to pop that on now. Okay, so for those of you who like the visuals, here we go. Got all this energy in Cancer here, including the new moon, all in your 10th house. We've got that full moon, Capricorn in the fourth house. Both of those make a square, so that makes a T-square to your Libra placement. So these are pressure points, but pressure doesn't have to be bad. It could just be the growing pains that you have to birth something new. The pressure could be on for an exciting project, or there could be tensions or stresses there. That is definitely a possibility as well. The Cancer placements make those nice aspects with the outer planets here in the sixth house. The Fate Triangle 
Here are the members. We've got Sedna in Gemini in your ninth house. We've got Pluto in Aquarius in your fifth house. And then we have Lilith in Libra right there in your first house. I didn't mention this before, but a little bonus for those of you who are staying on here with me for this is that Sedna in your ninth house is also opening you up to a massive, massive, long-term, very, very long-term chance for broadening your horizon. I mean, horizons. Now Jupiter's there, so you've got like a year of Jupiter doing his work, but Sedna's there, you know, just, it's just going to be there. So this is, you know, another force that is making teaching and learning and spirituality and being the bird that flies high over everything to get the bird's eye view, you know, expanding possibilities and being able to see beyond the veil and out of the box and come up with, you know, new ways of doing things. So Pluto has a very strong element of fate. And these all coming together like this can definitely bring fated relationships, can also bring you to fated locations. If you're drawn to go to a place that you've just always wanted to go or that has a, you know, some kind of sacred context for you that feels like a special place, there also may be, you know, something important for you there. You want to have more dates of what is happening in July, uh, you can go to anniehelpsyou.com, put your name and email address in. I don't send out very many emails. Occasionally I'll have a promotion and sometimes those promotions are just for the VIP community. So you could get special ones there, but usually I send out one a week, um, all education based. So you put your name and email address there, click receive, go to your inbox. If it's not there, check spam, move it to the inbox. Look at the archive link. In the archive link, you can put July 2024 astrology and you can get all of the, all of the rest of the info there. If you love how I teach and you want to learn, you can go, um, this will be right below that screen that you see at AnnieHelpsYou.com. You can go to up level and you can see my astrology basics and beyond course. And if you want like the gusto and you really want to jump in either to do astrology professionally, which I can totally teach you how to do. Some people wind up earning money doing astrology just a, you know, very soon into the program. I can't make any guarantees, but I can tell you that I very regularly will see this happen. Um, or if you just want to learn for your own self-development, you will love the astrology certification course, which you can see at anniehelpsyou.com. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.